In this video, we're going to talk about statistical independence. Now, from our previous videos, we knew conditional probability, that is, probability of A given B. Now, probability of A given B is given by probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. In general, this is not the same as probability of A. But in which cases or in under which circumstances can this happen? That is, probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. This can only happen when any evidence about B does not influence about our belief about A. So let us try to understand this with an example. Let us consider two fair coins that are tossed together. Now H1 denotes that the, the event that there is a head in the first coin toss and H2 denotes the event that there is a head in the second coin toss. Similarly, T1 denotes the event that there is a tail in the first coin toss and T2 denotes the event that there is a tail in the second coin toss. Now, what we are interested to find out is probability of H1 given H2. That is, what is the probability of getting a head in the first coin toss given the fact that the second coin toss results in a head. Now, intuitively, what we know is that both these coins are fair. Therefore, the second coin toss should not influence the outcome of the first coin toss. Therefore, we believe that this should come out as probability of H1. That is, it should come out to be half. So let's see how we can get this mathematically. Now, probability of H1 given H2 is nothing but probability of H1 intersection H2 divided by probability of H2. Now, probability of H1 intersection H2 is the probability of getting heads in the first and second coin tosses. Now, there are only one out of those four options can result in heads in the first and second coin, in coin, coin tosses. So that is going to be probability. That probability is going to be one over four. Now, getting a, the probability of head in the second coin toss is half. So we have probability of H1 given H2 as one fourth divided by half, which is nothing but a half which is same as the probability of H1. So this shows that probability of H1 given H2 evaluates to probability of H1. Now, intuitively, this means that knowing H2 does not give us additional information about H1. Now, let's take this notion of statistical independence and see how that helps us. So. What we have established is probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. And whenever this happens, we say that the events A and B are independent. In other words, knowing B tells us nothing about the probability of event A. Now we can now use this to rewrite the definition of probability of A given B. Now probability of A given B, if A and B are independent, is going to be probability of A. Now, using the, the definition of conditional probability, what we'll end up having is probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. This is a very useful formula. And whenever we have this condition, we can say that A and B are independent of one another. The reason is that we know that probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of B intersection A. So if A is independent of B, this means that B is also going to be independent of A. So this is, there is this definition, which is very important and used for all independence assumptions, which is two events A and B are independent if probability of A intersection B evaluates to probability of A times probability of B and vice versa. So let's understand this using an example. Now a gambler is rolling four fair die. And we are interested in the probability that there is at least one six in one of these four rolls. Now these four fair rolls or these four dies are fair, hence each roll is independent of the other. Now let xi denote the event that there is no six in the ith roll. Now, what we are trying to find out is the probability that we get at least one six in four rolls. We can rewrite this as one minus the probability 
that we get no sixes in the four holes. This will, so to find our probability that there is at least one six in four holes, what we do is we find out the probability that there is no sixes in the four holes and we subtract this from one. We can rewrite this as one minus probability of x1 intersection x2 intersection x3 intersection x4. We'll recall that xi is the event that there is no six in the ith row. Now all these xi's are independent of each other. Hence what we can do is we can rewrite this as one minus probability of x1 times probability of x2 times probability of x3 times probability of x4 because x1, x2, x3 and x4 are independent of one another. Now what is the probability of x1? The probability of x1 is 5 over 6. The probability of x2 is also 5 over 6. Probability of x3 and x4 are, is also 5 over 6. So what we have here is 1 minus 5 divided by 6 raised to the power of 4 which evaluates to 0 0.518. Thank you for watching. I hope this gives you a better idea of independence and if you're interested in knowing more probability concepts, please watch the other videos in my channel. Thank you.